So now we're looking at the anatomy of a cloud formation template. Uh, and so these are made up of a bunch of different sections. Uh, and here are all the sections listed out here. And we'll work our way from top to bottom. Uh, and so the first one is metadata. So that allows you to provide additional information about the template. I don't have one in the example here, and I rarely ever use metadata, but you know, it's just about additional information. Then you have the description. So that is just describing what you want this template to do, and you can write whatever you want here. And so I've described this uh, template to uh, launch an EC2 instance running Apache, and it's hard coded to work for US East One. Then you have parameters, and parameters is something you're going to use a lot, which is you defining what inputs uh, are allowed to be passed within this template at runtime. So one thing we want to ask the user is what size of instance type do you want to use? It's defaulted to micro, but they can choose between micro and nano. Okay, So we can have as many parameters as we want, which we'll use throughout our template to reference. Then you have mappings, which is like a lookup table. Um, it maps keys to values, so you can uh, change your values to something else. Um, a good example of this would be, let's say uh, you have uh, a region, and for each region, the image ID string is different. So you'd have the region keys mapped to different image IDs based on the region. So that's a very common use for mappings. Then you have conditions. These are like your if-else statements within your template. Don't have any examples here, but that's all you need to know. Transform is very uh, difficult to uh, 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 explain if you don't know what macros are. But the idea, it's like applying a mod to the actual uh, template. And it will actually change what you're allowed to use in the template. So if I define a transform template, the rules here here could be widely different different based on what kind of extra functionality that transform adds. We see that with SAM, the serverless application model is a transform. So if you ever take, take a look at that, you'll have a better understanding of what I'm talking about there. Um, then you have resources, which is the main show to the whole template. These are the actual resources you are defining that will be provisioned. So think any kind of resource, IAM role, EC2 instance, Lambda, RDS, anything, right? And then you have outputs and outputs is uh, it's just what you want to see as the end results. So like uh, when I create the server, it's we don't know what the IP address is until it spins it up. And so I'm saying down here, get me the public IP address. And then in the, the console, we can um, see that IP address uh, so that we don't have to like look at the EC2 console and pull it out. But the other advantage of outputs is that you can pass that information onto other CloudFormation templates or create a, like a chain of effects because we have these outputs. But the number one thing you need to remember is what makes a valid template. And there's only one thing that is required, and that is specifying at least one resource. All these other fields are optional, but resource is mandatory, and you have to have at least one resource.